Okay, hey, and welcome to part three of the uh, IC82 mini series, uh, series four prologue. This is where I go back and look at videos that I did years ago, but didn't do very well, didn't show you them properly. So here I am again, having another look at it, and today it's the Helgen Hawker Sidley uh, Kestrel, the HS4000, which is obviously a limited edition, as you can see there. It was, <laughs> it was a limited edition in real life as well. There weren't many of them about, um, in fact, I don't know how many they made, but it wasn't many. Um, so if you know, uh, please tell me, but there definitely weren't many. In fact, there might have even been one. I'm not too sure. Um, now, this box is fantastic. The packaging is incredible. Helgen's packaging is really good. If you've never bought anything by Helgen before, it's the first thing you'll notice when you do. Um, they're a Dutch company, I think, and they do some fantastic work on, you know, uh, rare and limited edition British diesels like this. So, um, but the th well, the thing is, unfortunately, there's I can't you can't see the locomotive. There's no window. There's no graphics. So I'm going to have to open the box before I can continue talking about it. Okay, so opening the box takes about two seconds, and once you're inside, you're presented with this. So this is quite nice, because this shows you uh, what number your limited edition Kestrel is. There we go, we can see it's just 2,553, although that, they are the worst fives I have ever seen, I think. But never mind. And then we go on to the instruction sheet. So you get a little bit of information there about how to look after the, the model, the locomotive, and then even how to chip it. And it has been chipped actually, and um, that's something we did quite a bit ago. And then you get some background info on the actual locomotive too, which is nice. On the back, I suppose that's all for parts that you can order that you might want to replace, maybe? I don't know. Is that... yeah, maybe? Kestrel body assembly. Mm. Well, it's already assembled, thankfully. <laughs> so we don't need to worry about that too much, but... Yeah, it is quite... I do recommend reading about it though. I mean, the history of this model is quite spectacular. It, it was when it came out. There was nothing else like it on the on the whole network. It really is a beast. It was a beast, I should say. And so I do recommend reading about it. But yes, here we go. This is the Hawker Sidley Kestrel. Um, it was a huge engine, a huge Salzer four thousand horsepower engine inside there, made by the Swiss company. They're still going actually. Uh, it's a Swiss company. Uh, yeah, from Switzerland <laughs> and. Um, it, the, the, it was picked because it was a really reliable engine, they had good experience with them in the past. And yeah, you, I mean there's even video footage of this on YouTube if you look for it. And the people are like, wow, just look at this. Um, <laughs> this was quite different to a Jinty rolling into Platform 5, that's for sure. Just look at that. And I'm pleased to say that the model is incredible as well. You do get a few accessories in there, I think, which I've taken out. Well, you get some couplings and stuff. Um, in fact, the couplings are just here. There we go. I still haven't attached them, so I'm going to have to do that in a second. But let me get it out, so let me just show you this. Let's have a look at it, shall we? Okay, so carefully, carefully lifting it out using this very nice sheet of plastic. Oh, wow. Okay, let's just push all this. Oops. Pull that to one side, get it out of shot. Okay, the first thing you notice is the weight. This is probably the heaviest locomotive I have in the entire collection. And I've got over a hundred and something locomotives now. But this is, I mean, what is inside it? Concrete? Bricks? <laughs> I don't know. But it's really, really heavy. And just look at those bogies. Oh, wow. Okay, so that's the driving wheel, that's the driving wheel, that's the driving wheel, and that's the driving wheel. So only the middle ones are, are, are freewheeling. So basically you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight wheels, uh, or four pairs, uh, driving this beast. And <clears throat> yeah, the, the traction on this model is incredible. You'll see that there's no traction tyres. There doesn't need to be, because it's so heavy that all of its weight just pushes down. Well, to be honest, I'm surprised it doesn't bend and buckle the rails and damage them. It's, just, it's so heavy. Um, but yeah, incredible, incredible weight. So no traction problems, which is good. And you'll be pleased to see 
that the detail is stunning as well. I think Hawk Asidley, well, no, <laughs> correction, I think Halgen, that also begin with a H, have done a fantastic job on, on this model because, as I say, I'm pretty sure there aren't any left. So they have done an incredible job to recreate it from videos and blueprints and photos and stuff. And as for that colour scheme, well, just, well, how 60s and 70s is that? You've got this fantastic sort of like mustard yellow, or I think it's actually yellow ochre, and then a chocolate brown on the bottom. And you can see there, it just says Kestrel. There's minimal roof, de roof detail. It's, well, no, minimal's a bit harsh. I mean, you've got some grills there, you've got some different textured panels on the side, and then even little air horns. So it's not minimal, it's pretty good, to be honest. It's not bad at all. But what really impresses is the cap. Just look at that. Wow, can you see that? Is the camera picking that up? Look at that cab detail. The doors don't open, but you have got handrails. You've got lights, and the headboards light up as well. The buffers are sprung, as you'd expect with a model of this um, pedigree. Yeah, it's just quality. It really is quality. And I'm pleased to also report that the quality doesn't end there. This is the smoothest running locomotive I have. Uh, yeah, it's hard to believe. Um, you might not believe me, but it, it really is. It's the smoothest, the highest quality mechanism and motor I've ever come across. It's just mind-blowing. Really, really is. And it, it's, it's incredible in DC form. But once you DCC chip it, <sighs> wow, it just blows you away. It really is unlike anything else and in fact there's so much detail as you can see that it's going to be a problem I'm going to have to either remove that chain or bend it out of the way so that I can get a coupling into the little NEM socket there so I'll show you how to do that now okay so I'm back and I've got my servicing cradle you can buy these from most model railway shops, to be honest, and you can get them off the internet as well. So if you don't live, you know, anywhere near a model railway shop, just go online and, and order one there. But I do recommend it because we are going to have to tip the locomotive upside down. Now, I said I would show you uh, me removing some of the detail from one of these ends, but um, I had a blonde moment and actually left the uh, camera in standby whilst I did that, so I didn't record any of it. <laughs> Um, so apologies for that, but I'm not going to butcher the other end of it just to show you how I did it. It really is quite simple. Um, all you need are some track cutter tools like this. Uh, yeah, they're called track cutters. They're very sharp, so watch out because they will take a finger off if you're not careful. But you, they're great for detail as well. You can use them for detail and lots of other jobs. Um, so all you have to do is you have to hold the locomotive really, really firmly like that and then just very carefully, you know, it helps because they're at an angle, it helps if you turn them upside down and then just basically take off the excess detail. Please don't scream at me, don't shout at the screen, honestly. It, it seems sacrilege to, to do something to that. I mean, you know, we, we moan about locomotives not having enough detail and here I am cutting it off. <laughs> but there's too much and I've only done it from one side. So this side is completely as it was, which is great, because that's the side we'll all see, because I'm going to have it pulling trains. And um, this is just the thing. If I was a collector and this basically just sat on a shelf for the rest of its life, then I wouldn't need to worry about it, would I? But the locomotive would cry inside. It, it honestly would be crying to itself if I did that. It wants to run. They all do. So I'm going to make it run. And that means that we've got to make room at one end so that the NEM pocket there can freely rotate and not interfere with all the um, vacuum pipes and chains and stuff. So I've just taken off what I think I need to take off. Hopefully that's going to be okay. So if we just carefully place it in there, upside down, okay, so that's nice and firm. And then grab one of your little couplers. Obviously that's going to have to be held upside down too. Lift the whole thing up into the air and you can see uh, the NEM pocket just there. Can you see that? Now, it's basically just a case of holding the locomotive, or rather I should say the bogey, holding the bogey really firmly whilst you force that in and it locks and clicks into place. 
Um, I can't really do that mid-air, so I'm going to have to um, cut for a second and then come back in a moment. Okay, and we're back. Uh, job done. Job's a good one. I've obviously got a spare coupler here that I'm not going to need, so I'll put that back into my spares tray because I'm only going to have a coupling on one end of this. It's not like I'm going to use it for shunting or anything, is it? So I can take it out of the cradle now. You'll see that this end over here is still as it was. Um, oh, chains up in the air. There we go. So that's still as it was as it came out of the box. But then the other end here has got a coupling in. Yay! It wasn't easy. I must admit it's quite fiddly. There are several ways you can do it. You can either uh, pinch those two, you see how it's like a little um, Y-shaped type thing. Oops, gosh, this is so fiddly. But yeah, you can either pinch it with your finger and thumb like that till that gap narrows and then try to slot it into the, the socket. Or you can use some tweezers and guide it in. And you can even hold the bogey and the actual pocket and then like force one side in and then use the pressure to force the other side in as well and then it should just clip in so yeah there's lots of different ways you can do it but it's in it's nice and firm and it's ready to perform so i've talked about it enough we know the details amazing we know the weight is incredible and there's only one thing left to do and that's basically to just show you how amazing this locomotive is on the track Okay, so here we are at the track, and I have the locomotive with me, and we have clearly defined front and back ends this time as well. Obviously because this is the end I didn't cut any of the extra detail off, that's going to be the front of the locomotive forever, and the other end is obviously going to be the back. Right, let's just get all these wheels lined up. I do have a railer somewhere, in fact I have several, but there we go, it's not too hard. Job done. It's, she's on the track. Now, she's got beautiful lighting, which you'll see in a second. And as I say, the mechanism is superb. 11 out of 10, easily. <laughs> and so let's switch the DCC controller on. Now, uh, it's a long time since I've run her, so I'm going to have to find out what number she is, actually. But, ha -da! I've got my little DCC book. So if I just turn it to the um, the green section which is for diesels here we go diesel logos now I know that some people say well why don't you just call it number 40 or something well that's no good is it because I've got two locomotives with the number 40 um, I find that this system suits me just fine so there we go Hawker Sidley Kestrel number 34 so watch it be something else now and <laughs> just throw my system totally out the window. Let's try number 34. 3, 4, select. Okay, let's give her a wiggle. <laughs> Which is the technical term for just testing whether you've got the right number. And there's no response at all. <laughs> Which means that she must be something else. Okay, I'm going to select number 25. And then I'm going to hold down select and then put in 34. Press select. Oh, it does just it just jolted then, I'm sure it did. Um, I must have renumbered it something else maybe when she was being serviced and just haven't switched her back to the number she's supposed to be. So let's see if she responds to 34 now. Oh yes, she does. She does. Look at that. And bear in mind, she's not ran in a long time, probably 12, 18 months at least. Okay, right, so let's send her around the layout. I'll show you how smooth the mechanism is and how amazing it is. And then we'll hook her up to a whole load of coaches because she's strong as well. Oh yeah, she's strong, trust me. And we'll get her pulling some express passenger services, I think. Okay, take it away, Kestrel. Oh, stop, stop, sorry Kestrel, we've not switched your lights on. <laughs> oh dear, it's just one of those days. There we go, look at that, look at that headboard. And now the little red lights. Okay, other way again. There we go. Gosh, it's so bright that the camera can't really resolve it. Which is a fancy way of saying, see it. Okay, go.
look at that. Look how smooth that is. And the speed setting is, is quite high. I'll just turn it down even more. Watch this. Seriously. Okay, lower, 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 lower. Okay, that's about as low as you can guess it. <laughs> Without it actually stopping. And look. I've never seen anything like it. It's not just the performance, it's the, it's the noise. It's just a beautiful hum. Almost a purring. Like, this is, this is nothing to her. This is, this is not a problem. <laughs> like she's saying, yeah, what? What do we do? <laughs> and, and then right to the other end of the scale. Again, just a beautiful hum. Wow. I don't need to say anything else. You can see for yourself just how incredible this mechanism is by Haljan. The, the Hawke Siddeley Kestrel, yeah. there's just, honestly, there's no words. It's, out of every locomotive I have, it's number one when it comes to smoothness of operation. It's number one, it's the best. The Class G2A is good, the Class 66 is good, Hornby's 56 is good, Hornby's Class 50 is good, but this, is better than all of them. It is. It's number one. There's no smoother locomotive. And you can still get these as well. You can still get them. So if you want to get hold of the smoothest, most amazing, most unique locomotive in the country, even in the world probably, then just get one. Honestly. I can't, I can't um, recommend the, the, the Kestrel enough. It really is outstanding. So what I'm going to do now is hook her up to a whole load of coaches. You see, there's some Mark 1s there. Um, well, they're all Mark 1s actually. Uh, uh, yeah, British Rail 1s and then a few XGWR and British Railways 1s and stuff. So I'm going to put all those on the track and get the Kestrel coupled up to them. And then I'll show you her haulage capability. Okay, it's just starting to go dark outside actually, which is perfect because we should see the lights on the Kestrel even better. So you can see that I've put the coaches on. They're the, they're, they are the British Rail um, Mark 1s and then there's some older ones there as well, XGWR and um, LMS coaches and stuff. Well, they're all British Rail liveried, but they're quite old. But that's prototypical, that's accurate. You would honestly have got um, a mixture just like that certainly around the 60s when coaches were changing over and stuff. So that's accurate, that's exactly what she would have pulled. Um, so let's just swing round to where Kestrel is. Here we go, reverse direction. Do you want to see that again? Do you want to see that again? <laughs> Let me get the camera up close on her lighting. Okay, so that's the reverse lighting, well, the, the back end. And then if we make this the direction of travel, yay! Excellent. Okay, let's just get her to back up and to her train then. Ugh. Honestly, every time you control this locomotive, you are blown away by how smooth it is. The, the motor, the mechanism, the wheels. Shut up, Will, we know. Okay, 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 I'll shut up. Okay, here she comes. And then let's just slow her down. Not too fast, let's try and be realistic. There's a train. Oh, 
Brilliant. Okay, so we, we knocked the coaches a little bit and there may have been a, a madam or two over here that lost coffee all over their dress, but oh well, it doesn't matter. Quick, let's go. <laughs> Direction change. Is she going to be able to haul this? Yeah, of course she is. Not a problem. And see, we've even got a lovely um, little tail lamp on the back of the train there. It doesn't light up yet. It will do, but it doesn't yet. Okay, so let's take it away. Wow. I've never done this, by the way. This is the first time she's ever actually pulled anything. Yeah, honestly. Don't you feel like you're uh, privileged? <laughs> okay, slow speed pass first, yeah? And then I think I'm going to conclude with a high speed pass and let you make up your own mind. Boom, 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 boom. The train coming into platform six is the amazing Hawker the Kestrel, with a gorgeous train. Oh, I love it. 